Hi, I'm Marvin McGraw, the builder of this Vans RV14. Uh, we're doing the airworthiness inspection today. We started April 1st of uh, 2013, so here we are four years, two months later. I'm Jim Allman, an FAA designated airworthiness representative, DAR for short. My job today is to issue an original airworthiness certificate to the applicant of this aircraft that's behind us. The period begins with an organization of the paperwork mm -hmm. and the second period will be a detailed walk around inspection and the third period will be an explanation of the operating limitations that must accompany the operation of the aircraft into its future. This portion of the inspection will deal with all the paperwork. We begin with program letter, which I've introduced previously. Then we'll do the application, the 8130-6. Then the 8130-12, which is the notarized eligibility statement. Proceeding from there, we'll go into the builder's log, followed by acquiring the three view drawings and or pictures that the owner has to supply. After all that, we'll just review the weight and balance to be sure it makes sense for the first flight for the test pilot. Program letter we showed you earlier to begin with drives this whole process. All these yeses and noes are important answers they will be used to develop the operating limitations at the other end. The information in the aircraft registry in Oklahoma City is listed on this printout. The 8130-6 facsimile is right here. And then the data tag on the aircraft is last, but all the information must flow through and be exactly as it's listed on the registration. The glorified walk around is the same walk around a private pilot would do to every aircraft. There are several things that need to be specially looked at beyond that. And that calls, the, calls into play the term glorified. I'll do a walk around inspection and I will look for special placards and markings that have to be in place that a normal airplane doesn't necessarily have. The first one is what we call our passenger warning. And those are some words that are very specific in detail, but it's got to be up on the dashboard or in the seat area where the passenger would exist. Another word is to call, it's a total word called experimental. And it must be at least two inches tall and placarded inside the aircraft. The end number on the outside of the aircraft can be three inches tall or 12 inches tall, depending on the operating speed of the aircraft. Ballistic placards may be required also if there are any ballistic chutes safety parachutes for the airframe. The aircraft data tag is also expected to be on the aircraft in an area that will not be harmed in any kind of event. And that data tag must have the information that we showed earlier on our documents to be sure that first responders to any bad incident can find out who owns the airplane and how it was built and the number on it. That completes the walk around. Once the walk around inspection is done, then there's a more detailed inspection that I can do from my own checklist that a builder or a pilot is not expected to do. I would only do that if I see something that might be unsafe and then I might ask the builder to show me 
how he built that piece or not. That can be found in builder's logs. That's why we have a builder's log with pictures and, and progressive pictures during the building process. Or we can just uncover an inspection panel and look in there specifically. That's my job as a detailed inspector beyond the glorified walk around. After the walk around, I complete my checklist and sit down with the owner and we review now the new document called the operating limitations and review the airworthiness certificate that I'm going to issue to this aircraft. When we're done with that process, the builder can then begin to fly the airplane for real. And that's when we approach the phase one flight test period. It will probably be usually a 40 hour period. It might be slightly reduced to 25 under special conditions. Once the flight test period is completed, then the aircraft and the owner can go everywhere they want that normal airplanes would go. And that's the end goal, is to be able to operate normally in normal airspace with the rest of our general aviation fleet. Hi, right, we're back. It's been a couple of hours to do the paperwork. We've done the inspection. So now we just put the cowling back on, close up a couple of access panels, move on to phase one flight testing. We hope this video was helpful. Thank you for joining us.